نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال قائل منهم لا تقتلوا يوسف وألقوه في غيابة الجب يلتقطه بعض السيارة إن كنتم فاعلين صدق الله العظيم So yes, uh, we are discussing the harms and the consequences of the malady and jealousy in particular and how the brothers are plotting at this stage that uh, what measures they can institute to earn the focus of their father. Uh, now, when a person is consumed by jealousy, then he doesn't think the options don't dawn upon him of virtue. The options that come to him, you see, it's the kind of life you live or the kind of thinking that you are surrounded by. They are, those things are going to make impressions on your mind. By way of example, a person uh, is having an issue in his marriage. Now, the way forward is to look at the life of the Prophet wasallam. how warm he was to his spouse, how caring he was to his spouse. Uh, am I performing my salah? Am I, am I not allowing for other negative influence in my life that is creating these problems? Like Fudail ibn Ayyad rahimahullah used to say, Inni la a'asillaha fa'ara dhalika fi khuluqi dabbati wa mra'ati. That when I would disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would notice my spouse and my children would rebel against me. Now, when a person is not living a noble life, then the options to come out of this crisis is, oh, okay, so then let me rather pursue an illicit relationship. Let me resort to some haram measures. So by way of example, that uh, the two sons of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, our eldest brothers, uh, the first sons of mankind on earth, when... Uh, uh, the one was jealous over the wife of the other. And then finally, uh, Adam alayhi salatu was salam said, okay, both of you present a sacrifice, present a sacrifice. And back in the days, uh, a sacrifice would be presented and a divine fire would come and would devour it. And that would be an indication of acceptance. As Allah speaks about it in the Quran, إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ قَالَ لَا أَقْتُلَنَّكَ قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانٌ When they both presented a sacrifice, فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا The sacrifice of one was accepted. وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ And the sacrifice of the other was not accepted. So instead of thinking, what have I done wrong that my sacrifice is not been answered? Uh, he said, لَأَقْتُلَنَّكْ Hey, my brother, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. You're provoking me. You're inciting me. فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ And that's what the ego did to him, to kill his brother. So his brother responded by saying, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah accepts from those who fear him. Develop the fear of Allah and Allah will accept your sacrifice. But lo and behold, at that time, the mind is blocked off. The intelligence has been uh, barred off by the devil. So the, the brothers are not thinking, what can I do more correct, more noble, more righteous to win the confidence of my father? But rather, let me get my brother out of the way. And that is how the devil thinks. And, and that is how, you know, the, 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 the system is. So um, they say, Uqtulu Yusuf, let's kill him. Awitrahuhu ardan, or let's cast him in a land. Yakhlu lakum wajhu abikum, you will get the focus of your dad. Watakunu min ba'dihi qawman salihin. And after that, you can become a righteous nation. Now, there's two explanations given to the concluding portion of the verse. Either they said that we can repent after our wrong. And in the previous segment, briefly, I touched on this here, that this is not tawbah. That you, you indulge consciously in the sin and rely on tawbah. The, the option of tawbah is there for a person 
who unfortunately succumb to his weak side, to his low self, or to the provocation of the devil. But you don't uh, calculate and orchestrate and premeditate the crime and the offense, and thereafter rely on the fact that Allah is gracious and forgiving and merciful. Uh, that, is, that is not the, the way that Tawbah is performed. So don't worry, we can repent after that. That is the one explanation given. And the other explanation was like, oh, you know what? It's a continuation of the discussion from before that your matters will be reformed. Meaning now at home, things will be fine because your dad won't have Yusuf in the way and he'll be fully focused on you. This is how they're thinking. But they're not realizing that whatever they plot in, by them removing Yusuf from the equation, the dad's going to be crying and lamenting over Yusuf's separation even more. So you're going to have a more sad and a depressed father than a more focused father on you, which supposedly is the motive of separating. But this is what I'm saying is that when you're overwhelmed by a crime, then your intelligence is barred and your intellect is veiled. So anyway, they decide and they plot and the eldest brother who intervened and he said, no, let's not kill him. Qala qailun minhum. One from amongst them said, la taqtulu Yusuf, don't kill him. La taqtulu Yusuf, that is really evil and heinous and horrendous. La taqtulu Yusuf wa alquuhu fi ghayabatil jub and cast him into a pit, into some well. So ghayaba linguistically, ghaba yaghibu literally means something that is blocked off or something that is absent. So drop him deep down that you cannot see him. And jub, jub in Arabic, you have bi'r as a well, you have jub as well. So jub refers to a well that doesn't have any walling around it. Uh, uh, some travelers or wayfarers or caravan can pluck him up, can take him out. Again, the word yaltaqithu linguistically, uh, those that are into Islamic jurisprudence will know that lukta refers to some item that was dropped on the way. A person didn't realize he dropped his phone and if another person came by and he picked it up, there's ruling pertaining to this lukta. And if it is a human that was left unattended, uh, then it is referred to as laqid. That you walk in and you just found an abandoned child or you found a lost item. And if you claim that and you pick it up, then there's consequences. Um, you know, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he said an amazing thing. He said, uh, 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 I was inspired by one woman. I was inspired by one woman and I was deceived by one woman. Uh, the woman that I was deceived by, I was walking, I was walking on the road. Uh, she pointed to something that was lying on the floor. So I thought this woman is mute, she's deaf, uh, she cannot, she's dumb, she cannot speak, she's hard hearing and speech impairment, so she cannot speak. So she pointed to something. So I picked it up, when I picked it up, she said, well now look after it, you're responsible for it, make sure you return it to the rightful owner. So she he said, that khada'atni imra'atun. This woman deceived me. This woman deceived me. Then one woman zahadatni and faqqahatni. Wow. He refers the whole tale. I'm just briefly. One deceived me. One inspired me with fiqh, And one made me become closer to my creator. The second woman was a woman that once asked me pertaining to a juristic ruling. When a woman is experiencing her cycle during the month. And uh, regarding some aspect of Islam, which I was unaware of. But her question prompted me to go back to my books and study and reflect and understand. And ta'allamtu al-fiqha min ajliha. I learned fiqha because of her. I learned fiqha because of her. And the third woman, Zahadatni, who inspired me and made me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was walking by night and she seen me and she uh, passed a remark and she said this is the man who performs fajr salah with the ablution that he made at isha and at that time this was not my condition but when she conferred this praise on me i decided to exert myself and from that day onwards, I would stay awake the entire night in worship. 
and I would offer my Fajr Salah with the wudu that I performed at Isha. So he said, Khada'atni imra'atun, zahadatni imra'atun, faqqahatni imra'atun. Anyway, I was talking about the ruling pertaining to luqta. So if you pick up an item, that is referred to as luqta. And if there is an abandoned child, then that is laqid. Now again, look at the beauty and look at the amazing deductions of the scholars of tafsir. Laqid refers to an abandoned human but more so a child before the age of puberty. So if it's an adult, then you won't refer to it as laqid. Laqid would be a child and a minor, a juvenile. So, Allama uh, Qurtubi in his tafsir from the word yaltaqituhu, yaltaqituhu, linguistically also supports the argument that Yusuf was a minor because the word reference is yaltaqituhu. Those that are into Arabic grammar and into the semantics and linguistics and etymology, they will appreciate these finer deductions. So the elder brother says, let's cast him into a well. Uh, some wayfarers, some travelers, some passerby would come there and they will pluck him out. In Kuntum Fa'ili, if you folks really want to do something, then here's something to do. It's not as horrendous as killing him. And uh, at the same time, you're getting him out of uh, the equation so your dad can focus on you. Anyway, they agree and they settle on it. Not to say that dropping the brother in the well was any lighter offense. Comparatively, yes, you might argue killing was more heinous, more grave, more severe, and this was not killing him. But hang on for a moment, like try to imagine this is blood, this is siblings, these are the children of a Nabi, but this is jealousy. How, how, how paralyzing a condition it is, how evil a state it is. May Allah protect us and, and keep our hearts clean. May Allah grant us clean hearts. Because لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. لا ينفع مال ولا بنون. Your wealth and your sons are not going to avail you on the day of Qiyamah. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ But the one who comes before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean heart. And that's what we need to aspire to, the purification of our heart. So they agree on this, that that's fine, that's how we're going to do it. But now is the, is, is the tall order, is the big ass, is the challenging thing. How do we convince our father to release him because our dad is very protective and very very possessive over over Yusuf so they decide and they agree we're gonna drop him in a well and there was some well in 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 the neighborhood in Kanaan in the place where they were residing anyway they muster the courage and they come to the father and they come and say ya abana malaka la ta'amanna ala yusuf wa inna lahu lanasihun qalu they say ya abana oh our father malak what's the matter with you dad why what's the reason la ta'amanna ala yusuf you don't trust us, you don't rely on us, you're not comfortable with us, you have reservation and apprehension when it comes to Yusuf. And surely we are his well wishes. We are his well wishes. So they're trying to hype the father up to convince him. Now the dad had reservations, he was a prophet, he knew the early signs of prophethood, he knew the jealousy, the rivalry amongst the siblings. So he always would keep Yusuf close to him and he was very fond of him and they realized this and they like, dad, but why don't you trust us? And honestly, wa inna verily us lahu for him lana sihoon. We are his well wishes. If you analyze the emphasis captured in this ayah, my word, it's amazing. And let me say a word of caution, there are many people out there today who are sugarcoating their evil motives. So they come and they have a bait and they cast their rod. Uh, but you're not going to bite on that bait because you're not convinced what's behind that bait. So they come and sugarcoat it and they give you this flowery expression and try to impress upon you that we mean well for you. We mean well for you. And this is no new tactic. This dates back to the beginning of time. Our father Adam and our mom Eve, Hawa alayhima min Allahi as salatu wa taslim, when Allah had prohibited them from the forbidden tree, then was it not the devil that came to both of them and said, You know what? Uh, I know Allah told you not to eat from the tree, uh, but must I tell you what's the wisdom of the prohibition? Must I tell you what's the wisdom of the prohibition? Right? So, you know, these are the kind of language today that's thrown out. I'm just wondering why? Why? So why? So a woman's got to go into an idda period post the, de the demise of a husband. So why should she be subjected? Why is this affliction? 
But why are you referring it to a subjection? Why are you referring it to as a torment? Why are you referring it to it as an infliction? This is the plan, the system, the teachings, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah farada fara'id fala tudayi'uha wa hadda hududan fala ta'taduha wa sakata an ashya'a rahmatan lakum min ghayri nisyanin fala tabhathu anha. Allah has demarcated certain boundaries and respect the boundaries of Allah. Don't transcend the boundaries of Allah. So the devil comes to our parents and says that مَا نَهَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا عَنْ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَا مَلَكَيْنِ أَوْ تَكُونَا مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ مَا نَهَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا Your Lord has not prevented the both of you from this tree. إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَا مَلَكَيْنِ If you eat from this, you'll become angels. أَوْ تَكُونَا مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ You will be blessed with eternity. Now again, to sugarcoat the bait, to convince the recipient of the message, to impress upon him that uh, what he is saying is supposedly correct. What does he do? وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا And he swears an oath. I swear, I take an oath, a solemn oath that I am only motivated by your interests. And hence Allah tells us, يَا بَنِي آدَمْ لَا يَفْتِنَنَّكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ Oh, the children of Adam, let it not be that the devil seduces you. كَمَا أَخْرَجَ أَبَوَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ As he expelled your parents from paradise. So uh, they come to the father and they say, يَا أَبَانَا O oh, our dad, مَالَكْ What's the matter? You know when a child wants to convince his father, I mean we know when we were kids and you wanted to get some money or you needed a favor. Well in today's time it's, it's, it's on a different scale. It's a car, it's a phone, it's, a, it's a, taking the debit and the credit card and... Uh, I often quote this in many of my talks. He's a rich man whose children run in his arms even when his hands are empty. He's a rich man whose children run in his arms. It's not purely viewing the father as an ATM machine where I can withdraw money and finance and I could uh, indulge in whatever I want. But that's my dad and I just want to bond with him. Ya Abana, O oh our dad, Malak, what's the matter? La ta'manna, you don't trust us, you don't rely on us. Uh, in the matter of Yusuf, وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَنَاصِحُونَ And surely we are his well-wishers. So we have a favor. And it's all of them together. So it's a collective voice. It's a common voice. It's one voice. It's an asserted voice. So obviously, it has clout. It has muscle. You're impressing a message. It's not a weak, faint uh, voice from one child. It's ten people speaking one language in one expression. And then they like, أَرْسِلْهُ مَعَنَا غَدًا أَرْسِلْهُ مَعَنَا غَدًا Send him with us tomorrow. Send him with us tomorrow. Yarta. Uh, yarta, he will eat nicely. Wayalab, and he will play freely. Wa inna lahu lahafidun. They repeat the same emphasis, and we are his well wishers. We are his guardians. Lahafidun, we are his protectors. So we're going to be around him, we're going to rally, and we're going to go on a picnic. The word rata'a linguistically suggests an outing. Now look at the beauty of the Quran. I mean, it just baffles me and it just amazes me to understand how all-inclusive this Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So rata'a yarta'u rata'an wa rita'an wa rutu'an linguistically means to go out and eat and indulge. And Imam Qurtubi has actually highlighted in his tafsir under this year the discussion of going out to eat, to go for a picnic, to go and relax and eat out. And he says, in principle, Yaqub did not object to that, that don't have an outing, which releases a hint to the permissibility of going and having an outing, just on a recreational trip. So we also learn that uh, that relax your hearts. And, and, and even the Sahaba, that it is mentioned that amongst themselves, they would have light moments. They would have some, uh, you know, humorous moments. They would also interact with one another at times. They would hurl melon peels towards each other. فَإِذَا كَانَتِ الْحَقَائِقْ uh, but then when it came to crunch time, when it came to the hour of need, then they would instantly, uh, you know, evolve and be strong and, and, and committed individuals. Uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, Inni la yu'ajibuni ay yakuna ar-rajulu fi ahlihi mithla sabi uh, um, I, I really fancy a man who can go home and drop himself and be like a kid with his children and play amongst them. The narration of Bidaya, the Prophet ﷺ is on his fours. And then Hassan radiallahu anhu mounts on the back of the Prophet of Allah. My word, my word. Can you imagine that? And Sayyidina Ali walks in and he says, Ni'mal markab. Oh my boy, I love your car. I love your car. 
And the Prophet of Allah said, yeah, and why don't you compliment my passenger? And why don't you compliment Ni'mar Raqib? I have an amazing passenger. So the word Rata'a linguistically releases the hint for a recreational trip. And in principle, Yaqub did not oppose the idea, which releases a hint that it is fine and it's necessary from time to time to go. Uh, but I must say as, as well, you know, I often mention this in my talk, that the pious were those who used to flavor their recreational moments with spirituality. So they're going for a stroll on the beach. They're taking a walk just in a, in a botanical garden, uh, just therapeutic, just relaxing, just unwinding, just looking at nature, interacting with nature. And while doing so, they would read the relevant verses of the Quran, which is a great form of dhikr. Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa akhtilafi al-layli wa nahari la ayati li uli al-albab alladhina yadhkuroon Allah on a recent trip, I was with my family in the Bahamas and we went on a cruise. And as we were moving in the Atlantis and we were enjoying the water and we were doing snorkeling with the kids. And then I started reciting different verses of the Quran. And they are saying that really, dad, Abu, are there so many verses of the Quran that And you will see the vessel, how it cuts through the water. And these vessels, um, you know what? Uh, they, they, they traverse from one side to the other in the search of sustenance. Uh, I was in, 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 in Panama not too long ago, and we went to witness the, uh, the great canal uh, that, that, that links the two oceans and facilitates for the vessels to cross over, making the journey so much shorter. And Allah speaks about these vessels crossing over the oceans. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kal a'lam, they look like mountains, they look like mountains. But if Allah was to stop the wind, then they would become stagnant on the back of the ocean. And then it would be challenging for, for the passengers, for the sailors, for the pilot, etc. Um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هو الذي يسيركم في البر والباحر حتى إذا كنتم في الفلك وجرين بهم بريح طيبة وفرحوا بها جاءتها ريح عاصف That while you're moving in the vessel and you're moving and then comes a strong wind uh, and then دعوا الله مخلصين له الدين When you fear that you know what the wind can, can circle you and there's a storm that's coming Now everybody calls out to the Almighty in desperation What's the English proverb? There's no atheist on a sinking ship there's no atheist on a sinking ship. Oh my God. When, when, when the ship is sinking, no one is agnostic. No one is atheist. Everybody is a believer because you are compelled to call out to someone. So anyway, I say that the pious were those, and I don't claim to be, may Allah make us amongst them, that they would flavor their recreational moments with spirituality. While today, unfortunately, our condition is we taint our spirituality with sin. So a person is going for hajj. Like while he's flying, instead of reciting Quran in the flight, he's like watching a movie or he's busy doing something else, uh, you know, watching something unsavory, something that's not palatable, something that's not good. One is educational, meaningful, etc., documentary. I'm not talking of that. I'm talking of something that's harmful, detrimental, that's futile, that's of no benefit. So you're on a journey of Hajj, you're going on a spiritual journey, you know, read about Makkah, read about Medina, uh, recite the Quran, engage in awrad and adhkar, etc. But in principle, we deduce the permissibility of a recreational trip and the hint is released from the word rata'a and this is captured in Qurtubi and other explanations given in different commentaries. So they say, Arsilhu ma'ana ghadan. Oh dad, please send him with us tomorrow. Yarta, we're going to have a picnic, we're going to have an outing, it's going to be recreational, we're going to enjoy ourselves, it's brothers, it's a good day. Yarta, wayal'ab and he will play and you know, it will be lovely. وَإِنَّ لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ And there's no fears, there's no worries, there's no concerns. We, his brothers, we tend, we're strong, we're mighty, we're robust, we're muscular, we're skilled. We will be protecting him, buffering him, insulating him, and fortifying him. So, Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam expresses his reservation uh, in different ways. قَالَ إِنِّي لَيَحْزُنُنِي أَن تَذْهَبُوا بِهِ وَأَخَافُ أَنْ يَأْكُلَهُ الذِّئْبُ وَأَنْتُمْ عَنْهُ غَافِلُونَ 
Yaqub alayhi salam responds. But like I said, can you imagine? These are 10 sons. They come in loud, assertive. Uh, they've got a resolve. They're committed. They're quite uh, intimidating in, in, in their approach and expression. Like, we need to make it happen. And please, and we love him. And we're going to do it. And we're going to party. And we're going to merry make. And it's going to be a good day. And it's going to be full of fun and activity. So Yaqub says, Qala, he says, Inni verily layahzununi. It brings grief to me. It saddens me. And tadhabu bi. That you take him and go. So that's the first reservation I have. Just the sheer separation from Yusuf is, uh, is cumbersome. It's challenging. It's difficult for me. I'm uneasy. Uh, your, your separation and me being away from him is difficult. Uh, Yaqub was very fond of him, was very close to him and was very attached to him. And he was young. Those that were big, they were adults. So they, they could kind of take care of themselves. We know when a child is small, he's around his parents. And again, that speaks about the volumes uh, of the challenge uh, that was on Sayyidina Ismail. Because at the time uh, when Ibrahim seen him in a dream, seen him in a dream that he was slaughtered in his son, the Quran said, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ أَسَّعْيَةً فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْيَةِ In the 23rd Jews in Surah Safat, when he was running around, you know, and he's of age, he's around his dad, dad, where are you? I'm coming back and forth around, rallying around the dad. The bond takes a different turn and twist. It's a different milestone, the growth in, in, in that child's life. So the attachment with the father is very strong at that time. That's the time. That's the time Ibrahim sees in a dream, إِنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ That I'm slaughtering you. فَانْذُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى What's your take? Wow, look at the expression of the son. He didn't say, oh, my dad slaughter me. He said, comply to the instructions given to you. The, the scholars say it releases a hint suggesting the fact of uh, optimum submission. That if the command had to be more profound, more significant, and the ass had to be greater than slaughtering, so be it. If I'll oblige ma tu'mar with instructions given to you. Satajiduni insha'Allah min as sabirin. So Yaqub was very fond, he was very close, he was very attached, and he's like, Inni la yahzununi. It brings grief to me. And tadhabu bihi, that you're going to take him and go. And by the way, you know what? Wa akhafu an ya'kulahu dhi'bu. And I am afraid that the wolves might devour him. Now, historical narration suggests that the area around was infested by wolves. And some others make different deductions, which I will endeavor to expound on in the verses to come. So, number one, my reservation is it's just difficult to part with my son. It's just difficult to part with him. And then I'm afraid that uh, the wolf might devour him and you would be heedless and, and negligent. And remember these tests came upon different prophets where they had to separate from their parents in early age. The mother of Musa, the mother of Musa is being told and inspired. In the opening verses of Surah Qasas in the 20th Juz, and we inspired the mom of Musa, an ardi'i, that you can lactate him, you can nurse him, you can suckle him. And if you fear that the intelligence of Pharaoh will intercept him, then put him in the basket and let the basket sail. And don't fear him drowning and don't grieve his separation. We will return him to you and make him from amongst the prophets. So we conclude on this note. They've come, they've agreed, they've asked their father. They beg him that please send him tomorrow. We have an exciting agenda. It's brothers together. We're going out. We're going to play and enjoy. The father expresses his reservation on two fronts. Number one, you taking him brings grief to me. And the second thing is that I'm afraid that the wolves might devour him because it's a place infested with wolves. And you might be preoccupied and be heedless and oblivious. And then the consequences will be catastrophic. Let's wait and see what happens. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ